now it, Halloween is all about the pumpkins, the costumes, the horrible makeup, and anything with skeletons and monsters over my But where did Halloween come from? Halloween came from uh, people called the Celts. Uh, the Celts were originally on this island a couple of thousand years ago, and they lived in a very tribe form. And the Celts had two main festivals, one in the summertime, and then one around now in October and November, and that was called Sawen. Uh, Sawen uh, actually means the end of summer, so around the time around here is when the end of the harvest has been related, and they were preparing for winter. So to build a great big fire at Sawen was a very normal thing to do, because their ritual was cleansing the area. Because it was believed that the fire would actually help purify the land and purify your village and home. Uh, whereas uh, it wasn't so much about getting rid of evil spirits, it was allowing the spirits of the dead to actually pass through to the uh, next world. Now, the Celts also believed that uh, there was this world, the physical one we live on, and then what's called the other world, the afterlife, so to speak. And they believed it so strongly that if they actually died in battle, they actually couldn't believe that they could pay off the debt. So, say the world's you are made a favour, if you died in the next world, you came back then instead of this world today. Uh, so they believe in death. Yeah. But also, summer was a time of preparing for death. Exactly, I know, that's right. <laughs> but summer was a time of preparing for death, preparing for winter. Uh, it was also around the time where the harvest has been collected in autumn, you know, in September already. October's a bit late for the harvest to be reaped. Uh, so the big fire there was actually the deadline before you could get any of your harvest to feed your family and feed your local clan. So that was the end of there. But you know, any livestock they had, now is the time to start thinking about killing it because unfortunately uh, age can make animals weak and make them sick. At this point you might have to kill them off to feed everybody else at the time to do it. So that's where sour nature becomes its momentarily aspect of death and blood. And also, with funeral practices, uh, people of course died in the winter as well. Those who weren't strong enough probably got ill and they would fall sick and then they would die also. So, Samhain was a time of reflection on the animal stuff you had to get rid of, unfortunately, the harvest that may be in the mist. But also, the, the elders who may have passed on and they were prepared for that, prepared that they were going to die in the winter. And that's also the veneration of Samhain was to get ancestor spirits. So, those who had died previously, they would help build a bonfire like before, or you'd light candles and then they'd pray to your ancestors, pray to those who've gone before. So take the spirits of your grandmothers or your grandfathers and you actually say, this candle's for you, let's honour you with a dance and we sing song. And the Celts loved a party, they absolutely loved it, they would build great big feasts and great big bonfires and get very, very drunk in the, much like every Friday night. Except nowadays we don't have big fires, we've got pubs instead. Now, how does that become to Halloween? Well, I'll show you. So that's the old, oldie version of Halloween. It's all about death, it's all about preparing for winter. Now, winter's cold, of course, there's plenty of snow, plenty of ice, and to get stuck outside in the winter is not really a good idea. You're not going to survive. Now, when the Christians came along and started preaching Christianity and converting everyone to their beliefs, uh, they didn't really like what the Celts were doing around this time of year, so they decided that instead of honouring your ancestors, they're going to honour the saints instead. Yes, yeah, let's make it all saints Eve, all Hallows Eve, you could say. And then November the 1st can be known as All Saints Day. Now, the Celts always believed that they would always count the days by the night. So instead of counting as today, they would count it by tonight instead. And roughly, they would also count the moon as well. So when there was no moon in the sky, that's when they counted their month. And so that's when, that's when Samhain fell around here, would be the first dark moon of November. So that's why the Christians changed it from Samhain into All Hallows Eve. And that played up all the way up until about the last 200 years or so. Uh, when, of course, America was discovered, all the people went over there, including a lot of the Celts of uh, more recent time, like the Irish and the Scottish, and they took their beliefs with them. And, of course, one of their beliefs was to help purify the area with the fire, but like I said before, except they didn't build the big fire bonfires anymore, they would build smaller fires to light their home. 
apparently the bad luck to actually build a fire from your own home without going to the big village fire first. And that tradition has always been held in Ireland, as far as I know, at least in Tara. Now, the Americans have been settling and finding their areas there. Like I said before, the, um, the Irish and the uh, Scottish settlers went over there and took these Christians with them. And around the same time, we've got the Native Americans as well, the actual uh, Mexicans. And they actually had a day called uh, Dias, los, Dias los Muertos, which means Day of the Dead. And around the same time, November the 1st, coincidentally, not actually intentional, uh, they would build great big altars and they would make sweets and cakes and food stuffs for their ancestors. Uh, the Native Americans believed that actually their ancestors would literally come back from the dead in ghost form and happily have a meal with you right there. Uh, so they would build great big feasts of sugar cake uh, stalls and sugar cake and things. Um, but nowadays you can get to big sugar tombstones, you know, that kind of thing. And they would actually invite their spirits of their local ancestors, their grandfathers and so forth, and they would eat the show plenty. So you mix that with the Americanness about it. So you've got the ghost worship in there, your anti-sub worship. And later on in the 20th century, it becomes a bit more commercialized. This is the image itself. And so instead of just being a thing for all the Irish settlers and the thing for Native Americans, it becomes something that you can sell to other people. And it becomes a bit more ghost. Let's make skeleton, let's make uh, the ghost albums. And it becomes a lot more what we know it is today. And of course, that name gets mixed up. Uh, old Halloween is a broken down in war, it's what is now known as Halloween. So Halloween is actually nowadays classed as a, an American thing, a, a very commercial thing as well. Actually, I would say Halloween is more of evolution of the celebration which has been going on for thousands of years. And uh, well, it's just evolved into something else. Yeah, okay, it's a bit more plastic these days, and it's a bit more orange and fiery pumpkin, but that's the evolution of roast. That's how these things go along. So everybody is celebrating Halloween. No modern versions of it, but the Christians don't even like it. But really, they're stopping people from allowing people to celebrate their ancestors. Really, if you're celebrating Halloween, you're actually saying goodbye to the line of your ancestors the very day. You're saying, okay, I know you've died. Here's what here's you have to Have fun with the other life, have fun with the next world, and when I die, I'll go up and join the party there. 